Good morning, traders. In this video, I'm going to show you how to better navigate charts using the Weeble mobile app. So I recorded this video on my phone. It captured the audio, but when I uploaded it, the audio is gone. So right now I'm going to overdub it. But the other nice thing is I'll be able to point to uh, little icons and stuff where I can't do that when I'm recording from my phone. So right now, this is me opening up the uh, Weeble app and we're on the markets page. I'm gonna click on the little magnifying glass to select a ticker symbol. And then I'm gonna show you how to uh, navigate the charts and how to use it indicators and place the indicators on the charts. So right now I had just clicked on that little magnifying glass and I'm gonna type in the ticker symbol AMC just because that's one everyone's talking about right now. You can put in whatever ticker symbol you want. Once you type it in, you're gonna see the results here and then you just click on the result and it'll pull it up in a kind of a chart view. So here, now we have the chart view. Here you can see the ticker symbol that you have pulled up. If you wanna change it, click on the little magnifying glass, type in another ticker symbol. Right here you're seeing the current price that is being traded at. This little up triangle shows you that the price has moved up since uh, yesterday's close. This amount, 227 at this current time, and at the time of this video, which was 12.22 p.m. Eastern time, it's up over 5% uh, compared to yesterday. And then next is this information on the right-hand side. This is showing you the price range, the high of day today. This is July 8th, 2021, $47.80. The low of the day is $38.76 as of the recording of this video. And the volume is uh, 86.88 million shares. So that means that that's the amount of shares that have been traded, both bought and sold as of the making of this video. So I'm going to let the video play and I think the next thing I did was pull down the down arrow on the right hand side of this uh, volume. Yes. So if you click on this little down arrow, you get some more information here. Again, it shows you the opening price, previous close price. Uh, I don't really use the percent turnover and percent range, nor the uh, PB or PS. You can look that stuff up if you can find that uh, useful in your trading. It's not for me. Um, free float market cap, not that useful. The market cap is useful. The free float share size is useful. Uh, basically, the lower the free float share size, the more likely the price is going to move rapidly in either direction based on the volume. So the larger the free float size, the slower the price is going to move even with a lot of volume. And here you can see the average volume and versus what the volume traded today. It's below average. So that gives you some information as well. You can use Investopedia or Google to find out more about this stuff. Uh, this is not a dividend yielding stock, but if it was, there would be a dividend here. And it tells you when the dividend gets paid out, the percentage yield on the dividend per share, and the earnings if you trade off of earnings. So uh, all of that stuff is, is useful depending on how you trade and what you trade. So now we're going to just talk more about the uh, chart here. So actually on the uh, buttons here at the top, right now you can see that it's selected on chart. So that's why we have this chart view. If you click through the buttons, you'll see what else is available from this page. So I'm gonna click on options. That gives you the options, options sorry, options chain. So if you trade options, this is very useful to you. The next thing is the news. If you click on the news, you can read news about whatever ticker symbol that you have up on the screen at that moment. The next thing is the comment section. This is the entertaining part of the Weeble mobile app. It's not a great place to uh, make decisions about what you're going to do in whatever trade you're in. But if you want a good laugh, you can uh, read the comment section. I mean, this first comment that pops up, it kind of tells you something right there. So anyway, moving on, you have some analysis that Weeble provides. Uh, you know, I would take that stuff with a grain of salt. And there's just some more stuff, you know, information about the company. Again, it depends on how, what type of like uh, due diligence that you do or uh, what type of research you do into your trades. For me, I'm a price action trader. If something is trading with volume, if it meets my, my uh, screener criteria, my chart criteria, then I trade it that day, you know, regardless of what news, what the analysis, what people are talking about it are saying, you know, I just uh, trade off of price action, but that's just me. So next thing that I'm going to show you, uh, so you see time and sales, the bid and ask. So let's back it up for a second here. The bid and ask is pretty useful. 
because the bid is where the buyers are. So I pause the video. So right now, the uh, price that the buyers are willing to pay, the highest price is $47.29. And so, uh, and the ask is the sellers. The lowest price that the sellers are willing to take if you wanted to buy shares is $47.34. So if you wanted to buy shares in AMC right now, at this moment in time that I have this thing paused, you would have to pay $47.34 or you're not going to get filled. You're not going to get any shares. That's just how that works. Think of it like you're at an auction. This is the bidders, right? And this is the seller. The ask is the seller. So let's say this is the guy with the car trying to sell the car. He's trying to sell it for $47.34. And the bidders are saying, I'm only willing to pay $47.29. They're not going to get uh, any, they're not going to be able to buy the car because the ask is at $47.34. So if you want to buy the car, or in this case, a share of the stock, you would have to come up to the level that the seller is willing to sell at. Simple as that. Otherwise, you have to wait until the ask comes down, if it does, you know, to the level that you want to get in at. So it's a little side note about the bid and the ask. And then the time and sales, this just shows you the orders as they're coming in. Uh, the number of shares being bought or sold at that price. Obviously, if it's green, that's the number of shares being bought at that price. If it's red, the number of shares being sold at that price. So that pretty much updates, you know, regularly or just constantly. And let's see here. Some order flow distribution. Uh, there, you know, there's all kinds of information on the Weeble app. Some of it is more useful than others, and you know, I don't definitely don't use all of it. I I mostly trade off of the desktop platform. If you watch my live tr trade recaps, you know that. Um, but if you have to use the mobile app, then there is a lot of useful information on it. Now, so now I'm going to show you from this view how you can adjust the time frame and turn indicators on. So right now, if you click on this little blue button, you'll get the different time frame options. So there it shows you, it calls it date range, uh, but these are the different time frames. So if you have it selected to one minute, each one of these candles lasts one minute uh, or represents one minute of trading. Uh, same thing, if you go to two minutes, one candle will now represent two minutes of trading, so on and so forth. So that's the different time frames. There are pros and cons to trading off of uh, each of those time frames, so you kind of have to figure that out on your own. If you're the lower the time frame, generally the lower the risk because the uh, difference in price is going to be much less on a one-minute candle versus, say, a 15-minute candle. So that's it. But it also depends on how you trade, how you place your stop losses, things like that. But in general, the lower the time frame, the lower the risk. All right, so now uh, what's the next thing? So I'm just messing with the time frames. Let's scroll forward here. This is the daily time frame. So each one of these can or weekly time frame actually. So each one of these candles is an entire week of trading. Now I start to show you uh, adjusting the candles. So to do that, or adjusting the appearance of the candles, you click on this these two little white candles right here, and that'll bring up the options for candles. So you have the line. Uh, area. I mean, there's all kinds of options. Hollow candles are the same as the regular candles, except for the green candles will be hollow. Heikinashi candles, all that kind of stuff. Um, so let's scroll through. So there's the line. That's what that looks like. I didn't select them all. I just showed you where they were and you can kind of mess with them. Now, this is the really cool part. This is an important part, a very useful tip and trick is I don't really like to keep it on this view when I'm looking at the chart on the mobile app because it's very difficult to kind of scale in and out and, and really make it useful. So what I did right here at this point is I double tapped right here in this area. If you double tap in this area, it will kind of explode the uh, the chart. It's coming in just a moment. I'm still scaling in and out from this view, just showing you that it's not very useful uh, in this view. And then I'm going to double tap in this area should be right there. So now look at this beautiful view now that we have of the chart. It's much easier to scroll in and out and uh, just get a nice view of all of the candlesticks and see what's really happening. So this is where I like to um, view the charts on the mobile app. If you wanna take a trade, you would obviously click that trade button and it'll pull up your uh, buy and sell buttons. I don't take a trade in this video because I was just explaining the chart. So now here is where you can get to the uh, indicators. So if you click down here where you see these two little horizontal lines and then that kind of jagged line in the middle, that's what pulls up the indicators. So you have your moving average. That's the same thing as the simple moving average. 
your exponential moving average, Bollinger Bands, IC, I'm not sure what that stands for. You can look that up. I'm not a big fan of using indicators anyway, so I don't waste too much time looking at all the different indicators that are out there. VWAP, that's a volume weighted average price. That's a pretty useful indicators. If you trade off of indicators, that's probably the single most useful indicator because it, it uh, includes volume into the indication, which none of these other indicators, all these other indicators just use price, they average price. So this one uses the average price and volume. So that's pretty useful. It also doesn't change as you change your time frame, where a moving average will be dependent on the time frame you're at. Then you have subchart indicators. This is volume, uh, MACD, RSI, those are really popular. I don't know what KG, KDJ is, FSTO, DMA, ROC, I have no idea what those are. You can check those out for yourself if you're interested. But again, all these indicators, they get to be like information overload. So if you're going to use indicators, less is more for sure. Um, and then even more useful than indicators are understanding how price action works and looking at support and resistance levels. Supply and demand is basically another word for support and resistance. So those types of things uh, and the candlesticks themselves are really much more useful than indicators. So here you just click on whatever indicator you want to turn on on the chart. And you're going to see here I got the VWAP line there. I've also turned on some of those subchart uh, indicators to show you what those look like. So here's the volume, the MACD, the RSI, and you can see how they kind of open up below the chart. That's why they're called subchart indicators, but you have volume. You can see how these look the same. You have volume overlaid on the chart automatically. So you really don't need the uh, subchart volume for sure. Um, so we've got the VWAP up and then I just turned on the, M the moving averages. You can see, uh, when I click that, they popped up and then I'll show you how to adjust the moving averages and change the colors. So here I've got three moving averages up. They're the five, the 10 and the 50. I adjust them in just a moment. And you can see how the, the 50 MA is the same color almost as the VWAP. So that's not very helpful. So I, in just a moment, I'm going to show you how to adjust them. So again, you go and you click on this little indicator icon and you click on this little hexagon that's the settings and then it, it'll open up the indicator settings and I think the first one that I click on yes yeah, the moving averages so this is the one thing that's a little bit confusing is it shows days whether you have the daily chart up or the one minute chart so right now technically the um, five moving average shows you five minutes not five days uh, but this always says days no matter what uh, anyway, now we're going to adjust the length of the moving average. So I'm going to change the five to a 10. So the easiest thing to do is to just click or tap in that little box. You can use the slider, but it's very difficult to be accurate with that. It jumps a lot because it has a wide range here, one to 999. So the easiest thing to do is just tap in the little box and then you'll get the uh, little keypad and you can just type in whichever moving average you want to place there. So I changed that one to the 10 moving average. On the one minute chart, that'll be 10 minutes. On the five minute chart, that'll be 50 minutes. On the daily chart, that'll be 10 days. You get the idea. And then I changed the second one to the 50. And then I changed the last one to 200. I was just demonstrating how difficult it is to use this uh, little slider here. You can see how quickly it moves. So it's easier just to tap in that box and then type in the 200. Now, once you have that set, you can just click on each one of these and you'll be able to adjust the color. You can pick whatever color you like. So I put the uh, 10 MA to purple, the 50 to blue and 200 to red. And now we just click on these little back arrows and that takes us out of those menus. And now we're back on the chart and you can see now the different M moving averages and they're in different colors so we don't get confused. And now we can see that the yellow is our VWAP, the red's 200, the uh, the blue is 50 and the purple is 10. So the other thing I think that I show you, yeah, if you click on that little down arrow, you can get some settings. You can go back to the settings through that. You can see the uh, VWAP and then the numbers next to VWAP, that's the price that the VWAP is at right now, 43.24. So you can see that the price is trading above the VWAP. You can hide the uh, little indicator things. So. The uh, price next to the indicator is showing you that the price of that indicator. So right now the 10 moving average is at 47.35. So you can see that the trading price is below that level. And let's just scroll forward here. 
And that's pretty much it. That's the end of the video. So hopefully that helps you with setting up indicators in the mobile app. Um, I'm not going to explain, you know, obviously why or how to use the indicators in this video. That would be way too much, but uh, this was just about using the mobile app, setting up the chart. The biggest thing I think that uh, the, the most important tip is just tapping, double tapping on the chart to get this exploded view. It's much easier to uh, navigate the chart once you're on this exploded view. The other kind of multi view is good to gather information about the chart or the ticker symbol like the market cap size, the free float size, things like that. But once you know, okay, I want to trade this ticker symbol, I think the best thing to do is to double tap that chart so that you get this nice exploded view and it's easier to uh, make adjustments to the chart while you're trading it. So if you have any questions about this, let me know in the comment section below and let me know about other mobile uh, Weeble videos that you would like to see and I'll work on making those. As always, go into every single trade with a plan no matter what, stick to that plan. Always take your stop losses, honor your profit target and in the long run, you should be green. Take care.